Well, a uh, brief introduction in case someone has managed to miss me, which is a bit difficult. Uh, my name is Lena. I work in the Learning Development Center as uh, an academic development tutor specializing in ICT skills. Uh, so I'm going to show you today how to use wikis, what wikis are, and how it actually works uh, in general. And um, quick check before I start blabbering on. Have any of you used wikis? Just a show of hands. You're not on camera, don't worry. Yeah, one, just one. Okay, um, I'm sure you're actually a lot more of you that have used wikis. Maybe not contributed to a wiki, but you've all used wiki. Um, the name sounds sort of familiar. You've all used Wikipedia, right? Anyone who has not used Wikipedia? That's going to be a show. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, so Wikipedia is a wiki encyclopedia. And that means it's an encyclopedia created by a group of people working together collaboratively to create this final piece of work. So a wiki is literally a website that is being created by a group of people working collaboratively. Because I'm sure uh, you already think yeah, all websites are created by multiple people, but usually they s separate the tasks. So you do the content, I'll do the design. No, the real wiki is work by all people at the same time on the same content and the final product is a collaborative piece of work. If you think about it as a website that you all work together, everything will make sense. That's what it is. Um, and because it's something that uh, not all of you, apart from one, uh, have used, um, that's why we set up this demo so we can actually show you what it looks like and how it works. Because uh, it sounds a bit scary creating websites, but it's actually quite straightforward. The actual typing in content and putting stuff in is quite straightforward. It's more the dynamics of the team and who goes and does what. That's what is the, the bit more difficult. So that's what we're going to uh, show today, plus some of the technical skills you will need. Um, so um, you already know my glamorous assistants here that are from my team. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't need even to introduce you. But uh, we are basically one team that is going to go and create a wiki. And uh, the beauty of creating wikis is that you don't need to be at the same place at the same time. Actually, it's better if you're not. Uh, because you tend to just chat rather than work. So if you're not together, you actually work more <laughs> better. Um, obviously, that will depend on the group uh, dynamics. And uh, we're going to discuss this a bit uh, later. But first of all, I want to go and show you, first of all, what a, a, a wiki will look like. In your particular case, uh, you will be given a ready structure for your wiki, for your website. Uh, you will be given some pages that are already set up for you, and you just need to put the content in them. You may create sub pages if you think logically it will make sense this to be split into sub pages. Think about it as a website, and it will make sense. But uh, you have the rough uh, structure already in place. And uh, because um, any who has worked in a team knows communication is the key, and obviously the wiki is designed for you to work independently in your own time while working on the same piece. The communication uh, becomes a bit of a struggle and just exchanging emails don't tend to work quite well because you end up in a mass trail of emails and no, I didn't read that one, or I didn't receive that one, I read that one, in the meantime someone actually sends another one. It becomes one big mess. So instead of using emails, there is a page set up for you to use it as a notice board. So you can actually put all your notices in the wiki itself. So you don't need to worry about sending emails or has anyone received this, if they actually read it, it's going to be inside the wiki. So um, I'll go to the wiki page and uh, it's in the navigation pane and you will see your group wiki space. If you click on that, it will take you to your wiki. Obviously I've set up a demo one for our team. Um, but the structure inside is identical to the structure that you will receive. Um, so all you have to do is click on the link underneath the name that says view. And if you click on that, it will open the wiki. Which obviously at the moment uh, is empty. Um, this is the first page that will open, which is the very first page hierarchically in your wiki. And uh, it's your ideas page, which is your notice board. Okay, think about it that way, it's a notice board. Um, and uh, there are multiple pages <coughs> that exist in this wiki, and you can access them from this button here that says pages on it. 
And the easiest thing to do is literally click on the button pages and it will display all the pages that you have in your wiki. And this is your structure that is given for you to create your content. The ideas, as I said, is just notice board to communicate, to uh, give notice to each other, ideas, just anything you want to tell the other members of the team can go in this page. And this is the actual uh, wiki. The first page, introduction, the second page, psychological theories, um, and then you have interventions, conclusions, reference section, and personal reflection <coughs> section. Um, a lot of people uh, make the mistake, which is quite understandable, to think when you create web pages and web content, if you think about web pages, you don't need to reference. Oh, you do. You do, and you have to. You're creating still academic piece of work. So anything you use, any text you use from other books, journals, papers, um, other people's ideas, courseworks, anything that you would normally reference in a written essay or a report, you have to reference here as well. <coughs> that includes images as well. And uh, part of the idea to create a wiki is to move away from all the text that you normally generate, just huge amounts of text and writing. The idea is to create a lot more intuitive environment, a lot more rich environment, uh, include a lot more multimedia in it. Uh, by multimedia, I mean anything from sound, pictures, videos, you can include anything you like. Links to external resources, like on any web page, you can include all of it. And this um, is really what you need to do in order to create something that people will actually enjoy reading. Think about it that way. If you come to this module and someone tells you there's a textbook that contains everything you need to know or there's a selection of web pages that you can go to and we'll give you the same information which one you would use how many of you are going to get the book i guess so no one because you need that sort of break from the monotonous text and it's quite daunting to see the full textbooks normally so think about the web pages that you ideally would rather use, <coughs> what you would like to see in them. This is what you're trying to create. You're trying to create information that will give um, the right level of understanding, the right depth, but not just text. You can include videos, you can include pictures, you can illustrate it, you can break it up into smaller sections, you can branch it off if necessary to subsections. Anything that will make sense and will make it easy for people to understand, this is what you're trying to achieve. So when you're wondering, will that, will that look all right? Think, if I see this, will I like it? Or will it look boring? Or will it look too long and I'm not going to read it? If you think it's too long and you're not going to read it, you know what you need to do. So always use um, your own ideas and your own perception of what you would have liked and try to achieve that. <coughs> it's not easy, but it's not meant to be. And also, it doesn't need to be all created in one go. The beauty of creating a wiki is you will be uh, working all together. And um, I don't know how many of you have done group presentations before? Have you done group presentations? Show of hands. Yeah, almost all. In all the groups, I bet you there's one who didn't do any work. <laughs> so this is something you cannot do in a wiki because everything is recorded and everything is visible. So if someone doesn't contribute, it's immediately visible. So there's no more hiding behind the group. If you don't pull your weight, it's going to be visible. And that's one of the criteria you will be marked on, your contribution. The other common uh, problem with group work is that people just split up the subtopics. And they just come together last day, put it all together, there's the final piece. No, it isn't. How many of you have read an academic paper that uh, had multiple authors, and you can recognize the different paragraphs? It looks like one piece of work. It's because they all worked together. They didn't write, I'll write the introduction, you'll write the main methodology, I'm going to write the conclusions. It doesn't work that way because everyone has individual style and it shows very, very obviously uh, in all the work. So you need to find um, a way to blend it in. The easiest way to do that is, first of all, let go. People are quite protective of anything they create. You invest a lot when you write something, and you normally try to polish it so it is exactly what you want to say. And then you put it up in your wiki, and the next person goes along and says, I don't like this. And they can change it, because that's the idea. Everyone can change everything. And then you get mad, 
I mean, I wrote this, I spent three hours writing this paragraph, how dare you change it? You have to let go, okay? You have to let go completely. You would be expected to edit everyone else's work and your work will be edited, deleted sometimes. Okay, so I know it's a difficult concept, but there are a few tips that will help you. The first one, don't try to produce the final piece of work at the very first time. Write the draft, think about it as a draft. Don't try to write it in a Word document and then just copy and paste it and say, that's complete, this page is ready. No, it isn't. If you need, and it's a good idea actually to write in Word first because spell, all the spell checking and you know, you can, you're more familiar with it. But then when you copy and paste it in the wiki, make sure it's not the final version. Don't spend hours and hours writing a paragraph or even two paragraphs. Just sketch out your ideas, put them in the wiki. The next person who goes along will polish them up. And they will not be yours anymore. And they will not be the other person's. There will be this mix of styles that will be the group work. So before you go to put some information in a wiki page, first of all, read what is already on the page. And as you read, it immediately comes to your head what you would have changed. I don't like this word. I would rather put a bit of explanation here. Just don't think it, do it. As you're reading one of the pages in your wiki and you, someone has written something and you don't like it, just go and change it. And then put your own stuff in there and leave it. Don't read it again. The next person will read it and they will polish it. So if everyone goes and combs this text over and over and over again and adds illustrations and adds videos, at the end you will have that perfect blend and it will not be a paragraph from me or a page from me and the next page from someone else is going to be the, the, the teamwork, the final uh, teamwork. Um, so the, um, yeah, the, the letting go is probably the most important thing. Um, as I said, writing a bit of text in Word before you copy and paste it in the wiki is absolutely fine. Uh, just don't try to create everything in the Word and then copy and paste it because you will end up writing big chunks of text because that's what you're used to. The moment you see Word, you just go blur, 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 blur. But that's not the way. <laughs> you, need to, you need to supplement it. You know yourself, when you go to a website and you see like three or four paragraphs of text, you normally stop at the second one. Maximum it's a push if it's very interesting, you'll go to the third one, you will never read the whole thing. So breaking up the text into smaller size chunks that will make sense and illustrating it or even adding a link to external source for even more information is something you can incorporate and stay away from this long bit of text uh, because you will end up doing that and that's the most common mistake, two mistakes, splitting up the, the text so everyone writes their own bit and just writing long strips of text. So move away from that. So um, we're just going to go and actually show you how it works in practice because there's only one little caveat with uh, this collaborative work. And I said everyone can work on the same piece of work. The only thing is, not at the same time. <coughs> so while someone is editing a page, for example, um, I'll go to the introduction, I'm going to start working on the introduction, and while I'm inside, no one else can go in. Okay, this is locked for me. And none of the team can see, um, can go and edit this page. So I'm just going to go to the, um, Actually, yeah, I'll go to the introduction page. And, oh, oh. and it's empty at the moment, but I can click on the edit. And it opens the editor. And this way the scary things go because that's not really a typical editor. It's very familiar. You can type in text, you can format the fonts, the size, uh, you can choose to be bold, italic, you can align it to the left, to the right, center. It's the same as any other stuff that you do. Um, there is an option to uh, include also bulleted lists uh, or numbered lists. So there's the same stuff that you would find in any uh, text editor. So I'm going to put here, this is where. And I'm not going to be greedy and I'm just going to save and exit because at the moment, um, when you create, when you're editing a page, you have three options. You can either cancel, you've made a mistake, you don't want to be in this page any longer, you forget what I just did, go back, that's absolutely fine. <coughs> you can click on the save, which will save the work you're creating, but you're still inside the page, so no one else can go in. 
but if you're working over long periods of time, it's a good idea from time to time to save, because you know sometimes computers crash, browsers crash, so just in case, good idea just to click save from time to time. And when you're done, ideally, not after too long, save and exit, so you free the page for someone else to go and edit it. So that's why I said it's a good idea to have um, a draft of roughly what you're trying to say, and then you go in the page to edit it, and then you put your stuff in, read, tidy it up, but you don't spend hours on it, because then during those hours, no one else can edit the page. So in, in a spirit of good teamwork, you don't want to be hogging pages for too long, <laughs> because it does get annoying. Uh, but obviously, I just wanted to put a couple of words in there, so I can click save and exit. And I'm going out, and this is what this page contains now. This text. That's all. And I hope in the meantime my team has been busy and they've been doing some work. So I'll go and check if any of the other pages. Oh, there you go. Someone from my team has actually been working. <laughs> and they put information in the ideas page, which was empty when we started. But they've been working on this while I was editing the other one. And you can also see who and when. Um, you can see also who at all has contributed to this page. Right here at the bottom, there's contributors a list, and these are the three people that have edited this page. And also, you can see the whole list of activities. By clicking on the activities at the bottom of every page, you will see who has done what. So no hiding. <laughs> Everyone can see who has done what. Um, there is also an option here for comments, and I need to warn you about those comments uh, because. You've all, I mean, I don't think there's anyone in this room who doesn't have Facebook. Is there anyone who doesn't use Facebook? Oh, good for you. There are a few. Good. Um, the problem, I mean, is Facebook is brilliant for some things. Um, the problem is it gets you into bad habits. Because in Facebook, when you write something, the only way people to contribute to what you've written is to comment. And that's stuck in your head that you can only comment. And people start doing this here. No, you can actually edit the content. The whole idea is to create content. Comments should be literally just for comments. So if you think this page is perfect, it doesn't need any more work, you can just put a comment. Please don't touch this, it's fine. Or if someone has stayed for three hours working on this page and you're desperate, you cannot edit the page, but you can write comments. So you can just write a comment. Get out of there, I need to work. <laughs> and hopefully they will see the comment <laughs> before too late. So comments are available, but please use them just for commenting. If there's anything that you want to contribute to the content of the page, if it's information that you need to add, edit the page and put it in the page, not as a comment. Otherwise it becomes this long chain of comments over comments over comments and it, it becomes a chat room. And that's not the point. So um, I'm not going to do any comments, but I'm going to go and edit this page. Um, because I don't like links being put like that. That's not really a good idea. Because if you put in the full link like that, it looks quite scary and doesn't look very neat. So instead of just typing up links, like literally the whole URL, you can hide them like you normally see links on web pages. Things like Word, so the Word becomes a link. The actual web address is still there and it's massive, but you don't see it, you see a nice tidy Word that acts like a link. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, I'm going to use this link. I'm not going to test it even if it works. I hope my team is good and it actually works. But I'm going to create a link that will take me to this page. So I hope this is just more information. OK, yeah, we'll just create the link and then we'll see. Um, more information. Click here. I want the words here to become this huge link, rather than having the whole link there. I want just the word here. So I need to copy this link first so I can use it. I'm not going to retype it. No way. I'm just going to copy it, literally selecting and copy. And then all you have to do is select the words that will become a link. And then from the menus, uh, from the options uh, at the menu at the top, you will see one of them is to insert edit link. It's quite straightforward, it looks like a chain. So you literally click on it and it tells you, okay, link to where? Uh, to this place where I just copied. Also, while you're creating links, uh, it's a good idea to think 
do you want people to go to this link and it opens on a separate page or you want it to open inside GC Learn? As a good practice in GC Learn especially because there are a lot more restrictions for that, just open it in a new window. It's external resource for extra information. If anyone wants, take them out in a separate uh, window, not keeping them inside GC Learn. So all you do is tick this option at the bottom which says open a new window. And if I click submit, oh come on, <laughs> don't do this. Okay, here, I'm going to do it the old fashioned way then. I'm going to simply right click over the word and then choose this option. Let's see if that's going to work. Okay, so it takes this place here, the actual link is this. Okay, new window. Target is a new window. Okay, ah, work now. For some reason, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't work by using the option at the top, just right click. I mean, right clicking is probably the best invention ever. Uh, because if you're wondering where stuff is, try right clicking, you'll probably find it. And then I'm going to save an exit. And this is how this page will look now. A lot tidier with just the highlighted words. Uh, rather than this massive link. So I'm going to test it. <coughs> Fingers crossed. I'm clicking on the link here. Yay, it worked. So it opened basically a separate <laughs> page with the resource uh, that my team members have found. So I'm going to go back to my wiki and let's see what else they've been doing. Um, <coughs> that is the ideas page. I hope the introduction is still there. Oh, someone has been editing already. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think I misspelled a few things here, and they have been tidied up. Thank you very much. That's the idea. Uh, let's see about the next page, psychological theories. Okay, there's nothing there at the moment. Because your other team members locked out of the internet. <laughs> ah. The browser won't support this, or it's got cookies blocking it. So okay. I'm <laughs> so I'm so one team fashion. member down, so that's yeah. why I had only one page edited. <laughs> Potentially, though, between all of you, you'll be working at different times, uh, so the chances of clashing on the same page are quite small. And obviously there's plenty of pages, so if you find someone is working on a page, just go and look at that, uh, any of the others. There's plenty of, of room for work. So if someone is editing the ideas, for example, um, I'm going to go and try to edit this. Ah, someone is in. So it comes up and tells you that Rachel is still there. Uh, and you can start timing if <laughs> it gets too long. <laughs> you can turn it off. So it gives you two options basically. It gives you the option to cancel and just let them finish their work, which is the best option. Or sometimes it gives you this really, really rude button which says break the lock. Please don't do that. It's very, very rude. <laughs> it means someone is in and what you're doing by breaking the lock, you're kicking them out. I don't care where you finish, I just, you go out and I go in. What kind of team that's going to be? <laughs> You'll end up with more fights and productive work, so let them finish. Uh, although sometimes, if the browser crashes and you go back to the page, it may come up that you are actually still editing the page. So the block actually is for you. So if you see your name there, feel free to break the lock, then it's obviously just a mistake on the browser. Uh, but please check, check the name. If someone else is in, let them finish their work. Don't break the lock <laughs> because they may have not saved their work. So they may have spent hours working on something. So ah, out, I'm going to go in. No, let them finish, please. <laughs> There's plenty of other work to be done. So um, I'm going to cancel this and I'll go to the other page. Hopefully it will be free. Uh, I'm going to go to the introduction and edit this. Yes, no one else is in, so I can go in. And what I want to show you here is how to insert images. And not just inserting the images, I want to show you how to search for good images and, more important, copyright free images. Uh, because uh, I know everyone is scared even to mention the word copyright, uh, because you sort of hope it's education, surely no one would mind. Uh, surely it's not good enough. Usually, yes, it's all right. <laughs> But uh, make it a habit to please always check the images you use, actually, you are allowed to use. Uh, because contrary to what mo most people think, if the stuff is on the internet, it doesn't mean it's free for all. Most of the images online are actually copyrighted. For some of them, you need permission. For some of them, you need to pay to use them. Uh, but some of them are free. 
So I want to show you how to find those that are actually free and you have permission to use them and then you can use those. There'll, there'll be plenty, I promise there'll be plenty. So where do you normally go searching for images? I guess so, but I just wanted to check just in case someone discovered a new good place. Uh, although I have few uh, good resources for images that I'll show you in a second. So, going to Google first. And I'm going to go and say I'm going to search for images. Once it loads, they go. And obviously I'm not just searching the internet, I want to search for images, so that's the where are the links images? Are they? Images. Okay. I'm searching for images and I'm searching for psychology. Hope I spelled it correctly. And it will give me all sorts of images. Just by looking at this, it's very difficult to figure out which one of them are copyrighted or not. But what you can do instead is use the search tools. There's a link called search tools available just below the search bar. You probably never paid much attention to it, but if you click on that, it gives you very, very useful tools. And one of them is usage rights. So by default, if you click on usage rights, you will see it doesn't filter by license. It doesn't care if it's copyrighted or not. You want an image there? You, you know what you're supposed to do with them, right? Google doesn't care. <coughs> but there's an option there you can use to show only images that are labeled for non-commercial reuse because you're not selling your wiki. So it's non-commercial. So if you choose this option, it will only display images that the author who uploaded it has already agreed for the image to be used. Not for commercial purposes, but you can use it. So all of those images you can use, absolutely fine. They are not yours, you still reference, okay? This is another <laughs> misconception. Uh, the fact that it's free to use doesn't make it yours. You still reference where you got it. Check with your reference guide exactly how you reference an image, but the minimum you need to start with uh, is the web address. At least, because you can always go back and find it again and get on any extra information if you need based on your reference guide. But at least the URL where you actually got the, web, the actual image. And another common mistake is people just right click and copy this image. It's a tiny preview of the image. That's not the full quality. You're creating a web resource. So quality wise, you don't need really high quality. But you want reasonable, right? So don't take something that is that small and then try to make it big because it's not going to be really good. You want it like appropriate size. Uh, if you're going to be printing it, even more quality. You need much bigger image. And then if you look at the search tools, there's an option there to search by size. So you can actually tell it to show you only large images if you're printing. But in this case, you don't need that because it's just a website. So I'm going to um, select one of those images. Um, let's say this one here. Doesn't matter which one really. Uh, and to get the full size image, click once first and it gives you a preview, a bigger preview of the image. And right next to it there are two buttons. Visit page and view the image. I want the image. So I'm going to click to view the image. There. That's the image itself. So I need to find a way to download it. Uh, there are links on the site to download, but obviously I don't need a huge quality. So I can then just try and copy directly from the image, just right click and copy. Or as I said, on the site here, in this case you have a choice, you can download it in much better quality. So I'm going to go back to my wiki, hopefully my team members have not kicked me out. And I'm going to, <laughs> I'm just going to insert the image. Uh, literally, you can right click and choose to insert the image and it's going to ask you, okay, where is the source? You can get it from your computer <coughs> or from the web address. Uh, and then you choose the dimensions. It's very difficult if you've not done any web work to imagine in pixels how big an image is. Most of the labs in the university, uh, the screen size is about 1200 pixels um, on the width of the screen. And every time you look at the wiki, you always see the navigation pane inside GC Alert. So your actual visual space left for the wiki itself is roughly about 800 pixels. So if you want your image to take the whole width, 
then you put the dimensions, you put the width around 800, but that's massive. Normally, you would want it to you know, just an illustration. So three, 400 pixels is usually okay size. And then you see how it looks. If you don't like it, you can edit it. But it's just a rough guide. So I'm going to include it as about 300 pixels. And it will automatically calculate the height of the image. And you better leave it like that. There's a tick here, constraint proportions. So better leave it like that, because otherwise you're skewing the image, you're, you're squashing it. So better leave it like that, so it's proportionally resized. And if I say, OK, there's my image. When you insert an image, by default, it uh, operates like a big letter that you've typed. So if you want it centered, you just center it like you center text. Literally, click next to it, and click on center, and there it is in the center. That's it. So it doesn't matter what the screen size is, it's going to be in the center of it. So that's an easy way to do it. Um, Okay, and while I'm here, before I forget, I'm going to take the URL of this page. So, I don't forget. So next time when I read carefully my reference guides and I find actually I may need a bit more, I can go back to this page and find what else I need. But at least the, the web address. So I'm just going to copy the web address of the image. And then go back to my wiki, save and exit and we'll go to the page where the references go. I have a whole reference section. I'm going to edit this. Thank you very much. Someone has already put some references, and I'm going to include this one as well. For the moment, it's literally just a note of the stuff that I've used. Obviously, it needs to be properly referenced, following your reference guide, the same way you do with written work. Usually, the name, comma, the year, but you do check. And with images especially, but at least you recorded it. So that's the first step. You have a note of it, so it's not going to go away. So images, um, the text is said it's pretty clear. I'm going to go and check if any of my team members have done anything uh, on, <laughs> on the text. Uh, no, this text is still just the same. Uh, this one is right, just started. So I'll leave it to my team members to make it look a bit more pretty. No, uh, put some color in that maybe, make it a bit bigger, put it in the center, you know, make it look a bit more um, user friendly rather than this block of text. Um, another thing I want to show you, which is also slightly different um, and probably something you've never done before, is uh, to include a video in your pages. Because videos are really, really nice way to supplement the information without writing huge amounts of text and wondering how to source all of this and make sure you get all the references right and everything. If there is a good lecture, for example, by someone explaining the exact topic, just put it in. And then you just need to write the text around it, supporting that. I mean, obviously, you don't just put video after video. You need to write a bit as well. But it will save you a lot of the detailed breakdown and obviously will be a lot more user-friendly to have videos rather than just text and images. Um, when videos are concerned, um, copyright issues are slightly different uh, because most of the times you get your videos from YouTube. And when you put your videos in the wiki, you're not copying the video. What you do is you are embedding it. And embedding works in a very different way. So you don't take a copy of the video and claim that's yours, or put a reference where you got it, because embedding literally creates like, imagine like a window on your page, through that you see the YouTube video. So you can still go back to YouTube where the source is, so you're literally just pointing to the source. So with the YouTube videos, you have a lot more freedom of in, for simply embedding in terms of, of copyright. Obviously, you read the instructions on the videos themselves. If this is standard YouTube license, that means that usually embedding is absolutely fine, especially for academic purposes. But some of them may have additional notes saying, you know, you need to ask permission or whatever. Just read that. Um, the other thing you need to consider when you um, go and search for good videos, I'm just going to go to YouTube as well while I'm talking, um, is look for the um, the source who is actually posting this video. And please watch the whole video before you put it on your wiki page, because sometimes they start pretty normal. Uh, and then at the end, you have you know funny rabbits jumping and doing silly songs or whatever. 
Um, just please watch the entire thing, listen to it, don't just watch it, listen to it and make sure it's fine. Um, because sometimes people play jokes like that. Uh, so you need to uh, find a good quality video. So I'm just going to search in general for psychology. And looking, skip it all, I mean, just don't even look at the one that says ad next to them. Those are the ones that paid YouTube basically to put up their videos higher up on the list. Uh, so no, I'm ignoring them altogether. Good videos don't need that. Um, intro to psychology, crash course, psychology by crash course. Has one million views. Maybe it's all right. I'm going to risk it without watching it. I'm going to put it in. Uh, but I'm saying that I'm risking it because someone from my team hopefully will watch it and make sure it's fine. To embed a video, you need to Choosing go... Choosing a university oh, is a... Uh, you're going to have to go to the video itself until it plays. Not the preview and well, the search result, the video itself. So you click on the video until it is on the screen ready for you to watch. And what you need is the embedding code. Okay. It sounds scary. You don't need to create code. You don't need to write HTML. No, you just literally copy and paste. But the embed code is available from below the video. You will see um, just below the subscribe button. You will see a link that says share. If you click on that link, it will give you different share options. And one of them is embed. So all you need is this code. You copy and paste it. Um, I'll show you how to paste it because it's not that straightforward. But um, you have also ability to format the size of the video. Again, think how much space you want uh, on the screen to be taken by uh, that video. And then you can change the size here. The default one uh, varies, but it's, uh, it's usually slightly big for a web page. But in this case, we don't have any score, so I'm just going to take that. And as I go to custom, yeah, I'm going to leave that one. And I'm going to copy all the code that is for embedding. And then when I go to my wiki, I'm going to put it in the introduction. Hopefully it's free. Yes. And, oh, someone has been making pretty things with my text. <laughs> I have some blue text here and some orange text. I'll talk about the colors in a second. Um, but I'm going to put the video just below the image. Obviously, it's your choice. You can put it next to the image. Uh, you can decide before the image. It's entirely up to you, depending on the meaning of it. But in order to put a video on the page, if you look at the options uh, in the toolbar, one of them says insert slash edit video. If you click on that, you will see there is an option here to uh, choose a video from your computer. So if you've recorded something, that's really the best option. Not many people have the time to do it. But then no problem with copyright, you know exactly what is in there. It's yours. You can do whatever you like with it. Um, and most uh, um, phones have pretty decent cameras. So feel free to do that. Short interviews, you know, little videos here and there. You can do that. Um, and you can upload it from your computer, literally by clicking uh, on the icon next to the source. But we are looking to embed a video from YouTube. So you need to go to the second tab, which is embed. And if I go there, I just paste your code. There it is. I don't understand what it means. I don't need to understand what it means. I get it from the video and I just paste it here and it should do the job for me. So if I click OK, it will show the box where the video will go. Don't panic. Okay, a lot of people have missed my video. It's fine. It already displays the video when you save and exit. You have to be outside the page for the video to display. So I'm going to save and exit. Ah, there it is. It's on your page. So basically, you have a series of pages on certain aspects of uh, your topic that you need to go as a team, put some information in, supplement it with videos and uh, pictures, maybe put additional external links for useful information that you may have found, but there's just too much to put uh, in your page. You can put it as additional uh, links and don't overdo everything yourselves. Let everyone else contribute as well. Don't try to polish everything. Next person will go in and polish it. Polish everyone else's work, not yours. Because then you will not feel so attached to your work and you will not be so annoyed when someone changes it. Um, also, please stay away from the comments if you can. Use them literally just for commenting. 
Um, and so use the ideas page. That's probably the best means of communication between you. Just use the ideas. Anything that comes to your head that you think, that may be useful for the others. No, I found this, but I'm not sure where to put it. Just put it in the ideas page and someone else may have an idea of where exactly it will fit or should it fit at all. Um, and uh, one last thing to mention before we finish uh, is the page about the reflection. You need to create uh, a bit of a reflective, uh, you need to write a bit of a reflective uh, piece for yourselves, for your own experience. But obviously that's a wiki, so everyone writes. So that's not going to quite work that way. So instead of that, what you can do is create a page for everyone and create it as a sub page of this one. I'm going to show you very quickly how it's done because it's very straightforward. Literally, you click on the button that says new page and you put in the page name, which in this case is, uh, just, I just put my name and I'm, I'm going to add the page. I'm going to say this is where text will go, save and exit. So if I look at the pages now, there's my page right at the bottom, which is not really a good idea because it's not at the same level as everything else. It should be a sub page of this one, right? Because every team member will be with their own sub page within the reflective section. To move it to the right place, uh, if you look as the, um, <coughs> what's that, the right side? I'm mixing left and right. Uh, at the right side, you will see a button settings. And you will see page hierarchy. All you do then is grab this, come on, page hierarchy. Load, load, load. And then I should be able to drag it. If it allows me, it doesn't allow me at the moment for some reason. But if you activate page hierarchy from here, all you do is literally just drag it this way. And that's it. It's very straightforward to do. Um, so hopefully that would have cleared some questions about wikis. Do you have any questions for me? Do your head is too frazzled at the moment. <laughs> um, I run drop-in clinics uh, every Wednesday between 2 and 4. So if you have any questions, any problems with the wiki, just come and see me. Okay?